If you are an empty nester, you may think all of your troubles are behind you when it comes to paying for stuff for your kids. But today we're going to talk about how to tackle wedding costs. And I'm going to share with you some of the wedding costs that I've had in raising my six kids. Coming up next. Thank you for joining me today. I'm Bonita from Pennies to Dollars. And on this channel, I talk about frugal living, saving money, cutting expenses, and living your best life on less. Now, I have planned a few weddings and I've certainly helped pay for more than my share. And today we're going to talk about some of the tips and tricks that I used and some of the areas where I just had to bite the bullet and pay for it. And we're going to talk about that today because even if we're empty nesters, even if we've early retired, we may have some kids that are still getting married. And I am traditional. So I believe in paying my part of the wedding ceremony for my kids. I have a daughter who's engaged right now. She's 30. And I have assured her that I will be helping her pay for that wedding. And she said, no, mom, you're retired. You shouldn't do that. And I said, I paid for your sisters. I paid my part for your brothers. I definitely will be paying for your wedding. That is just something that I want to do. So we're going to talk about some of those things today and what is traditional and what is normally paid for by the bride's parents, by the groom's parents, and then maybe some of the ways that we cut corners in tackling those costs. Now, my husband and I married later in life. I shared that with you in another video. We got married when we were both 47 years old. And one of the ways that we did this to try to help cut expenses, his family had a reunion every two years in the Lincoln National Forest in New Mexico. And so we decided to plan our wedding as part of that reunion all of the family would already be there on his side and then my kids the ones that could traveled and came to the wedding and we went together and rented an airbnb together for the stay now he had a cousin that makes cakes she volunteered to make our cake you can see that picture in my thumbnail she did an absolutely beautiful job his mother wanted to buy my bouquet, so I picked what I wanted my bouquet to look like. I wanted fake flowers, and I called ahead to Roswell and picked it up on the way, and I still kept that bouquet. I still have it. That's why I wanted fake flowers. I got my dress and picked out a non-traditional yellow dress. That's one of my favorite colors. My middle daughter worked at David's Bridal and she was going to college while she was doing this. Now, I never learned to sew, but my two oldest daughters are wonderful seamstresses. And so I went there. She tailored my dress to fit me perfectly. And she said that was her wedding present to me. So these are some of the ways we put that wedding together. And then there was a big dinner afterwards with entertainment, with singers, and that was our reception. So yes, I married later in life, so maybe this wouldn't be something everybody would want to do, but it turned out to be the most beautiful wedding ever. We got married outside. We had a country minister from one of the local churches that we prearranged. We stopped in Roswell, not only to pick up my bouquet, but to also pick up a marriage license. It turned out wonderfully. And my daughter-in-law took pictures as well as my sister-in-law, as well as some of the other family members. And then they all forwarded those to me. And my husband has a cousin who is a photographer and he took a bunch of gorgeous pictures for us at no cost put them on a jump tribe, and we had them by the next evening. So as you can see, that was a very minimal wedding, but it turned out so lovely.
Now, my oldest daughter, she's been married 17 years and I paid for her wedding. Her wedding was a formal wedding. We had the venue at a country club. That's where she wanted to have it. We did have to go ahead of time, put out the tablecloths, put out the centerpieces. The family stayed behind, cleaned everything up when they left. We also did all the centerpieces ourselves. And so for the months prior to the wedding, we hit every Hobby Lobby there was to buy these beautiful glass bowls. She wanted floating candles. We picked these copper and champagne colored candles and we had to hit all these hobby lobbies to get enough of the right colors to do the floating candles we set all of those up ahead of time as well and a great aunt in fact was a florist and she had made all of the pew flowers for the end of the pews herself out of fake flowers, which had been used in several of her granddaughter's weddings. She had them laid out in her spare bedroom over her bed. She said, come get them. You can swap out the flowers to match your colors and you can have those. So we went and picked those up, bought the flowers, took time swapping out the colors to match the theme of the wedding and got all of those pew flowers for free. My daughter also wanted a dance. One of her friends were the DJ. We did pay him several hundred dollars for doing that. We bought her dress off of the David's Bridal racks of Markdowns. We got her dress for $400. It was absolutely beautiful. And she wanted a catered meal at the venue with two different main courses. So we had a very expensive catered meal. So my biggest costs for that wedding were the catered meal and the venue. Everything else we were able to put together at a really reasonable cost. We also did the punch ourselves. We ordered the cake and the groom's cake. I'm very old fashioned, so we always do the groom's cake that you cut from and then the wedding cake with the tears. And then you save that top piece of the cake that's little and round for your first anniversary. And you put that in the freezer to save, to celebrate then. We also covered the dresses for the bridesmaids and she picked those out and we also paid to have those altered and we also covered the photographer so as you can see there was a lot to pay for when all of this gets combined for a formal wedding and at that time i think we paid close to five thousand dollars for everything that was our part but even back then, I had heard how some weddings were $20,000. So I felt like we did a really good job reining in those costs, putting the money where it had to be spent, that we couldn't really discount that in too much of a way, and then saving money in other areas to make it affordable. Now, if you're the mother of girls, you're probably sitting there thinking, my goodness, what does the groom pay for? Well, in this instance, the groom's family covered like the engagement party or the pre-wedding party, and they went all out. I mean, there was hors d'oeuvres, it was a fancy venue, it was evening gown dresses and suits, and it was wine and champagne, the whole nine yards. But the groom's family also will cover any alcohol that's at the wedding reception, corsages, tuxes for everybody, including the father of the bride, any ushers, anything like that. They also cover the ring, the marriage license, and the money to the preacher, and they pay for the honeymoon. So that's generally what the groom is responsible for. Now, my middle daughter, she's been married 10 years. She also had a formal wedding. Now, we had it at the church where her husband went to church. We had the reception there as well. And the reception she wanted catered, she wanted barbecue. We ordered the barbecue and her dad and I picked up the barbecue and brought it and set everything up ourselves. We also made all of the drinks for the reception. We made all of the punch. 
we did pay for the cake. We paid for her dress, all like the same with my first daughter. We helped with the centerpieces, the DJ, the cake, the book they all sign in, all of that. So we bought the dresses for the bridesmaids and the photographer that we used for our wedding that was my husband's cousin he also did my daughter's wedding so her wedding actually ended up costing less because we didn't have to pay for the venue and we didn't have to pay as much for the catering that cut back on the cost there i think her wedding was probably closer to thirty five hundred dollars which is very affordable in that day and age as well again this was seven years after her first sister and we were able to even spend less than we did on her sister that wasn't our goal we went with what she wanted and that is what she wanted so it all worked out in the end and then of course with both of them i had to go out and buy a mother of the bride dress to match their colors that's also an added expense that you have to think about as well and we paid for invitations and mailing of those invitations for both of the girls. We never did the wedding planner thing. I went with what my daughters wanted. I helped coordinate it. I helped pay for things. I didn't just write them a blank check. I didn't just give them cash. I physically paid for everything to make sure that everything was covered and to kind of monitor those costs and track those. Now, the groom, I've had a couple of sons get married. Um, one of the sons eloped. He chose to do that with his bride. And the other one, we did the tuxes. We did a lot of those things and did it at our local church. So him providing the corsages, the flowers, that sort of thing. His was very, very inexpensive. I don't think we spent probably even $500 maybe altogether. And a lot of that was the tux rental. A lot of people tend to plan their own weddings or pay for their own weddings these days. And that's okay if that's how your family does it. I just wanted to share with you what we did. This was a requested video on how I did that. My daughter who is engaged right now, she wants an outside wedding and maybe an outside reception. So she is looking at that sort of thing. I have told her I will be glad to help in any way that I can. But just because we're empty nesters, sometimes we still have some lingering children that haven't married yet. I still have a 25 year old son that will probably get married at some point and I will need to help pay for all of the groom's costs there. So I just wanted to talk about that today because many times we think, oh, once we're retired, we're done with all of that. But sometimes we still have kids that our responsibilities are still there as parents to cover some of these last costs of them becoming an adult and starting their own family. So I hope that this video has been helpful to you. Maybe you've been able to use something that I've shared today. I thank you for listening and I hope to see you in the next video.